what's up again there guys, Brian here to 3 Topics Gamer here to give you another episode of my weekly Q&A where I answer a series of questions that have been sent to me over the past week. Uh, this episode was relatively basic, only about 5 questions, nothing too out of the ordinary. So like always, if you happen to enjoy this episode by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to keep track of me and all my future episodes uh, that I upload every Friday. And if you could, uh, make sure you, you know, you, if you have time, you can actually join me in all my uh, live streams that I do on Twitch from uh, between like 1 to 4. Uh, I actually have I've been having quite a bit of fun with them now that I'm regularly streaming every week to mix, keep some consistency. So starting with the first question coming from Night at Slayer and you want to know what is my opinion on the most underrated Star Wars Force ability and why? I don't really know how to define underrated power. I mean I don't really know how to define that. I mean, they're powers that people use, their user universally. They're powers that only a few people know how to use, typically know how to use. I mean, not everyone knows everything. Uh, even someone like Luke Skywalker doesn't know how to use every single force power, and he's openly declared the most powerful force user in Star Wars. So I really don't know how to define or pick something that I think is underrated, because uh, it, I guess someone's force power kind of just helps them stand out. So, because of that, I can't really pick anything I think is underrated. They all are useful to a specific user in one form or another. So, that's the best I could say. The next question comes from Zach Tarf. You want to know, is there any Resident Evil plot point that made you tilt your head and ask why? Yeah, Resident Evil 7 and 8. Why are we turning this into a first-person shooter? That has nothing to do with the plot. I was just like... Okay, it's a first-person shooter now. No thanks. So, yeah, I guess there's that. Next question comes from the Batman of Neil Gotham. You want to know which game franchise am I personally getting tired of, and which the developers would retire and give a satisfying ending? Huh. Let's see a franchise that's kind of. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe Halo. I mean, I don't. I don't consider myself a major Halo fan, but I I think they're dragging this thing out a little bit too long. I mean, it's Microsoft, and Microsoft, I mean, Master Chief is, you know, their Mario. So, you know, Nintendo will never stop making Mario games, so I guess in that sense, they won't stop making Halo games. But, you know, just personally, that's just something that I think if they had enough confidence in creating new IPs, they would retire that one and then try to make another one but heck this is microsoft so i don't see that happening anytime soon next question comes from shout Jesus gaming you want to know am i looking forward to this year's e3 yes or no and why i don't know because since sony hasn't been there i haven't really been that interested in the past number of e3s because they don't really reveal anything that i'm interested in i mean what press conferences do they have i mean i don't own an xbox and never will so nothing xbox shows is interesting um, I don't really use my Nintendo Switch to play new games anyway, so nothing from Nintendo can impress me. Uh, Ubisoft typically only reveals another Assassin's Creed game, and heck, I, I didn't really enjoy Valhalla all that much, so until they release a certain uh, Assassin's Creed game set in a certain time period, I probably won't be playing an Assassin's Creed game for a while. Um... Uh, now nah, that's really it. I mean, Sony usually has their like ind independent like videos where they show everything that they plan on uploading, and that's typically what I am excited for. But heck, as long you know, since Sony won't be at E three anymore, so I mean, it's E E three is not as appealing as it used to, and that that's very 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 much very clear. So I uh, I I can't really say I'm excited for it. I mean, if they you know surprise me and show me something, then I'll be then I'll like it, but. Uh, that has, it hasn't been the case for a number of years now, so, yeah. And the last question in the episode comes from the Virgil, Virgil, the son of Sparta. You want to know, how do I feel about the presence of LGBT in video games such as The Last of Us and similar? Okay, I really don't care. Uh, I've, I, I'm gonna say something that's, that might, that might be controversial. I, I don't think it's controversial, but I, the whole idea of presence of LGBT in, Movies and video games, I don't really care. And that's how I feel about it in the real world. Now, I will admit, my opinion on the whole LGBT thing has definitely changed over the years. It went from being kind of disgusted by it as a teenager, to being okay with it as a young adult, 
to right now, I really don't care. I, I don't, I legitimately do not care. I do not care about that at all. When that was revealed in The Last of Us, that was literally the least interesting thing about that character. I just generally didn't like Ellie at all. So whether she was gay or straight had absolutely no impact on me at all. If it were revealed in this upcoming Horizon game that Aloy, Aloy was gay, that would not change my opinion about her at all. I don't care about a person's sexual preference. I just care if that they're a good character. It's the same thing as people. I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, gay, trans, straight, bi, pansexual. I don't care about any of that anymore. I just care that you're a decent human being. That's all you have to be to be cool with me. That's about it. So the fact that they keep pushing this and try to force this into games is a little bit annoying, but it's just like, look, if you want to make that character part of this community, just put it in there, but don't make it like a focal point. Just make them a good character. That's all you got to do to make them cool with me. And they have done a good job at that. Judy, Judy in Cyberpunk 2077 is openly gay, and she's... But that has nothing to do how I feel of it as a character. She's just a great character. That had no impact on me at all. And that's how I feel about a lot of these other characters. Heck, I don't care what their preference is. Just make them just make them a good written character. That's it. And that's how I feel about people in general. So yeah, I, I really don't care at this point. And that about does it for this episode of my weekly q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any more questions, check me answer. And next week's episode, be sure to send them in to me before next Wednesday, before noon, before I start filming the next episode. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome. And I will see you next week.